Good evening, everyone, and welcome once again to the place to be each and every Sunday night, where tonight I'm with you again, Alex McKellar, and joining me in on behalf of uh, the chaotic one who's off crook tonight is Mr. Ben Snell. Ben filling in at late notice, mate. Looking forward to a, uh, a, a big night of action from Zolda this week in the alternate layout, mate. Yes, hello Alex and hello everybody. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, a little bit late notice, but I'm here and I'm also feeling under the weather. But <laughs> let's, let's get going. But yeah, we're here for round four of season twenty-two of uh, Sunday Night Lights. Of course, formerly Monday Night Lights here at Zolder. And uh, another cracking strength of field here this week, Alex. Yeah, absolutely. We've got 4,200 once again, a bit over 4,200 tonight, which uh, is fantastic. I wasn't expecting it because we've got the uh, the big Daytona 24-hour race that we're uh, competing with tonight. But we've got some fan favorites. We've got uh, Julian O'Fray from Red Face Racing joining us once again. As we go top to tail in our seedings, we've got uh, Naoya Nagai-san Nagai joining us once again, leading Japanese seeded driver here tonight. Uh, Giuseppe Tolini from Italy, uh, he's back for another crack at it. Zach Zhao uh, from Asia, uh, I'm going to guess that's a Chinese name uh, for want of uh, a better country allocation. And the leading ANZ driver tonight, once again, Brett Mc Brett McBurney, who's uh, seated fifth here tonight, Ben, and hopefully uh, going to put on a good show. Yeah, it's great to see Brett's back with us once again, um, being a very high-rated driver as well, with a lot of pace to burn. Uh, just unfortunately, just haven't quite had the luck so far this season, so hopefully he gets a, uh, a bit more luck on his side and uh, shows the result that he's capable of. And uh, also coming back to us is Enzo Cantor, Enzo Genzo on Twitch. You want to uh, go show Enzo some love as well, our favourite Italian, and uh, as well as being a strong racer, he's a uh, a strong contender for the uh, the most popular interviewee in the uh, the Sunday Night Lights uh, realm. Yeah. As well as uh, your friend Gog Kawabe, Alex. Yeah, Kawabe san uh, joining us once again. Seated seventh tonight. He'll be hoping to get another one of the top ten finish. Maybe maybe even crack it for a top five. Uh, Daniel Blanco back for another run. We've seen him a few times, the Iberian. Chris Herrera, we don't see the US guys uh, join us too often, uh, but he is back, and he's pretty quick too, just quietly. I've had uh, had a few races with Herrera, and he's apparently team running on empty. That's that's a new one, that's for sure. Um, yes. Sorry, go ahead. They're running some, uh, some fresh equipment as well um, with a new direct drive wheel. So um, it's going to be an excuse for him to be even faster once again, once he gets the hang of it. Um, he's followed up by our number 10 driver, Corey Lean, another Australian competitor here tonight. Yeah, Corey's been putting in some hard yards, getting his eye rating up to guarantee a crack in the top split. Uh, he's been sort of... The Dark Horse, uh, in many a season, he's been languishing somewhat in the second split and scoring good points there. He's got pace to compete in the top split, but just never had the I rating. So hopefully the consistency remains high and he can uh, have uh, have an impact now that he's in the top split once again. Now, oh, number 11 here tonight, Ludwig Gedi, of course, our race winner last week. He's had a lot of time off the skips. He's come back this season. He's come back with a vengeance. And uh, although he might be seeded 11th, that seeding, that number's getting lower and lower each week. Uh, he's had a couple of podiums and a win. Uh, for, oh, no, he bombed out at Watkins. He had a podium and then a win. Uh, and expect him to be right near the pointy end this week as the guys are out now on their second flying lap with Nagai-san leading it. Well, 140.6, that's a decent first lap, Ben. Yeah, an absolutely cracking first lap. Um, as we see, uh, Enzo and Julian hasn't put a uh, time in for their first lap, so expect those two to jump up the leaderboard as the second laps start to start dropping in. As I say, as we see Julian there pop up to second with a 40.8. Not besting, though, are there? No, no. I think he might actually have a second lap, does he? Yeah, he pitted early after bombing his first one. 
uh, and he's uh, and the guy's improved. He's, he's down to a 40.2. So Afray does have a second lap to put in. The question is, does he have time? Yeah, he probably does with a minute and a half remaining. Uh, I think he's probably around far enough in the lap to get a second one in. So expect him to have another say in this one. Geedy's finished now. He's in third. Zach Zow's jumped up to P2. That's a good, st a good tilt in qualifying. Brett McBurney now, the ANZ driver. Uh, tucked in behind Mitchell McLeod, actually. McLeod's jumped up to fifth to be the uh, leading ANZ driver off the grid as we see uh, Daniel Cam uh, Camareri. P pardon me, Daniel. He's uh, from Italy. He's jumped up to fifth just to pip McLeod there, Ben. Yeah, it's great to see McLeod uh, put on some solid qualifying form uh, and leading the Australian charge right now. So we do have a few Australians in here tonight, which is great to see for the Australian strength of field race. And someone that has, I've noticed, just snuck in as well uh, is one of our perennial second split runners of Samuel Collins, Alex. Yeah, great to see Samuel get a stint or a tilt here tonight. He's uh, qualified at the moment down in 16th, uh, 17th plated driver, and he's uh, put it away as we're just watching O'Fray for Red Face Racing. Uh, of course, he and his uh, his teammate a couple of seasons ago dominated, but uh, he's a solo flyer at the moment. He said he's coming back. Oh, he's just got across the line, and he did. He put it on pole. Well done to O'Fray. We might uh, we might grab uh, the grid while the guys uh, start getting ready to come out. Of course, Sunday Night Lights, Season 22, Round 4 from Zolder here tonight. The Red Face Racing, Julian O'Fray stuck it on pole with a 40.2. No, uh, Naoya Nagai, son from Japan, he's chucked it on P2, just half a tenth behind Zach Zau from Asia. He's in third tonight off the grid. Ludwig Gedi, last week's winner out of fourth. Danielle Camareri. Uh, from Italy out of fifth tonight. Mitch McLeod talking. He's out of sixth, the leading ANZ driver, followed by his compatriot in Brett McBurney out of seventh. Mavano Sim Racing, sole driver in the race tonight. Uh, Enzo Canna, he's out of eighth. Chris, Chris Carrera from Running on Empty, he's on for ninth off the grid. Jeff Snavelli from uh, the US, he's uh, out of tenth. Giuseppe Tellini from Italy out of 11th. Daniel Blanco, the first Iberian off the grid tonight, starting from 12th as we move down the order a bit. 13th, Ian McFadden from UK and I back for his second run. Kawabe son, Gal Kawabe from Japan, he's out of 14th tonight and looking to move forward from there if he's going to get his top 10. Corey Lean, not qualifying as strongly as he perhaps would have liked, out of 15th tonight. And Samuel Collins, the other ANZ driver in the field now, he's out of 16th. Uh, Takumi Yamato makes his top split debut on a Sunday night for 17th off the grid. And Daniel Foggiarini back in the top split tonight from Italy. He's out of 18th and starting at the rear of this field, Ben. We've got 14 laps ahead of us. Uh, what do you make of what we got coming up? It's going to be a, a very interesting 14 laps coming at us right now with uh, a very, very technical course. Some uh, very aggressive chicanes, lots of curbs, lots of ways to kill your car around here. And uh, I think there's going to be some spectacular racing, Alex. Yeah, as the red lights do come on, and they, of course, mean rev. And the green lights mean go as we are off for the first of 14 laps around Circuit Zolder. The alternate layout tonight, we've got the different first chicane as the drivers come down into turn one. Two by two they go, plenty of room given. Uh, as the guys try to get themselves sorted out. No first corner muck-ups here. How are they going to go through turn two? Still side by side at various points throughout the field. They're starting to single it out. Oh, nose cone flies off to the far left on the exit of turn two, three there as they come down to this fourth gear. Turn four leading on to the very long back straight there into the first chicane, which of course is where we will see tons of action here tonight. This first chicane is very tough going, very heavy braking down three gears into second gear, and then hopefully not getting rear ended. And uh, away they go. There, they all got through there that time, Ben, and looks like we're on for a cracker. Yeah, it's good, everyone. Well behaved as we see Herrera and uh, Brett McBurney there having a little bit of contact coming into the second chicane there. Herrera making the best of that. And uh, poor Brett's getting shuffled backwards at quite a rate at the moment as we see uh, just Jeff Snavelli, sorry, also falling back to the clutches of uh, Daniel Blanco. These guys going three wide now into the hairpin, who, uh, <laughs> as we see, big time from Corey Lean. Look for Corey to make his way further forwards in the uh, the race tonight, Alex. 
is qualifying probably not uh, showing his uh, overall pace. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he'll have the elbows out trying to get forward the 10-plated car, making uh, a long way to return. He's had a couple of top split runs in the past, but uh, looking to get it done and make an impression this time round. As we jump back up the front, as we see O'Frey for Red Face Racing leading uh, from Nagai-san. Wouldn't it be great to see a Japanese driver on the podium? We uh, we thought we might see it last week from Nagai-san, who's got a ton of pace in the skips. Great to see him out there and hopefully uh, mixing it up with the big boys for the remainder of the race. As we've got Giddy now. He's at one spot. Again, look for last week's winner to play a very patient game there in third. Uh, look to move forward as he did last week. He was buried deep in the lead pack, which was about eight, six or eight deep, even towards the closing stages. Got his elbows out, moved up, and beat Simonson for the win. That's a one big notable absence this week. He's Benny Simonson as the guys come down into that first chicane once again, get it done, line astern. This time round, nice and clean, they go through once again. It's this long, snaking tail of this field. All 18 cars still circulating at this point in time, Ben. Looks like we've still got a good race ahead of us. Yeah, definitely, Alex. As we see this field starting to spread out a little bit more with this uh, longer, tighter technical track really uh not seeing that more aggressive pack racing that we saw from the lights of watkins Glen or even imola so imola being a very technical track itself um you still saw a lot of drafting with those very long straights but everyone still seems to be playing very well so we see a little bit of a break lock up there from uh was that enzo on the back of mitch there so enzo is probably the most aggressive looking driver right now but him and mitch are starting to fall off the back of daniel there and starting to lose that lead pack alex yeah, gap there, what's that, about six tenths, so uh, they could, oh sorry, no, off the back of Camelini, no, they're out to about 1.3, so yeah, they they could be well out of the running there, uh, depending on how they go, fastest lap sent, uh, laid down there by Zach Zhao in P4, sitting in uh, that first leading pack with Cam, uh, Camarari, uh, Jeepers, I'll get that right maybe one day. He's, oh, McBurney's in the wall, Alex. Oh, he's gone, is he? He's been turned, unfortunately. Yeah, he's so, jumped to the pits. I'll see if I can't grab a replay. Uh, let's see if we can. Oh, no, that's a bit... Uh, that's after the event. I'm going to see if I can't pick it up, mate. Uh, it, here we go. He's off track there. Let's see if we can't grab it. What's happened here? Lean. Oh, Lean's just turned him on the exit of one. On the exit of one, as they're grabbing the gas, he's been turned by his uh, compatriot... Corey Lean, uh, and that's put him in the pits. Surely more will be said about that. There's probably more to the story. We didn't quite uh, get there early enough. I don't know if McBurney didn't have the drive or what happened there, but it looked like Lean just put him in the wall. Ben. Yeah, very unfortunate there for Brett. Um, once again, showing he's got the pace, but just doesn't quite have the luck at the moment. And hopefully uh, the future weeks can turn that around for him now as the front pack is still line astern at the moment with Julian starting to look like he's trying to make a bit of a breakaway. Definitely looks like he's dragging those top five along with him as uh, Mitch McLeod's doing his best right now to try and bridge that gap to that top five pack, Alex. Yeah, he is. They go through this final very fast chicane now. This is the only part of the layout that's changed in this alternate layout. It's very quite tricky as we see in the background. I think it was the the uh, three car of Tolini just dodging the wall on exit as Corey Lean goes up the inside of Tolini that time round. Uh, very easy to run wide there. and There's no forgiveness from that wall on the outside of the final turn. And uh, yeah, the guys coming to grips with this different layout is more challenging than you think a fourth gear chicane might be. Although fourth gear chicane probably does sound a bit more challenging than i'm giving it credit for ben yeah i, I think chicane okay no worries fourth gear corner okay no worries you put those two together and um, i don't think it's <laughs> quite the uh, the recipe of an easy corner uh as you see these guys right on the limited grip through that little uh flip flopping left hander into a right hander again with that wall right on the outside right next to a gravel trap so not only you're unsettled if you drop a tire off on the outside, they all of a sudden lose a whole bunch of grip as well. And the only thing that's uh, ready to greet you is that big tire stack on the left-hand side. Yeah, absolutely. As we see the front pack now, led by a fray still with Nagai and Gidi, right up his tailpipe, looking to try and build a gap 
Very hard to pass here depending on the pace of the guys in front of you. Not as easy as you might think in draft. These cars certainly are a draft, drafty cars, we all know, but certainly not uh, as draft to pass here as you might think. Uh, with Zach Zow now sitting in fourth, he's, uh, what's he, about seven tenths off the back. Perhaps struggling to hang on with Camareri uh, in fifth just behind him. And then we hit that Mitchell McLeod group. Mitchell McLeod led group, I should say, with Cantor and Herrera tucked in behind McLeod with Lean now. Trying to pull along behind him. Giuseppe Tolini, uh, see if they can't make an impact. Corey Lean already up six positions uh, from where he started. The front pack now exiting turn one, coming on to turn three and four. Uh, two and three, I should say. These uh, third gear right-handers leading onto the back straight out of turn four, Corey. Uh, ben. <laughs> Hello, I'm Ben. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it looks like the, the top three definitely showing their dominance right now with uh, Zach just managing to hold on, but looks like Daniel is indeed falling back into the clutches of the cloud, who's dragging Enzo and Chris along with him. We've seen Chris run super wide onto the back straight there, but keeps the momentum going. So it looks like there might be a move for the lead at the moment. As it does indeed, oh, there we go. Julian was defending super aggressively there from uh, the guy there as he stuck the car on the outside. Nowhere else to go. And that was a car on the grass behind there as Gini looks up the inside of the guy now into the chicane. He's going to be on the outside. Is there going to be room left? There is indeed as these guys going side by side into that final chicane. Gives Julian the chance to try and break away a little bit there as we now sweep back around that right-hander onto this uh, fast-flowing back section, Alex. Wow, Gini there making track where there wasn't any. Uh, I'm glad he yielded into that second chicane. There could have been more said about that after the race, I'm sure. No, Isan uh, managing to hold on and defending through that second chicane with O'Fray now leading him out uh, into this final very fast uh, left-right combination. Fourth gear, grab a bit of the grass, but not too much because there's a sneaky slowdown there. Let the rear of the car very loose on change of direction there in fourth gear. You're flat almost through out tiny little lift through that final chicane uh and a lot of bravery is what it takes perhaps uh, holding your breath while you do it as these guys running now uh let's start a lap six of 14 of course uh going through the opening sector now very long first sector almost all the way down to that first chicane uh, and these guys flat knacker through there zach zow now sitting in fourth still just within draft range there. Now McLeod has joined the, the back of this group and look for Feathers to fly. If he gets anywhere near that front group, he will be playing to win, Ben. Oh, definitely. Uh, Mitch McLeod is definitely not someone that you would expect to just hang back and, and play nicely. He's going to be wanting to make his way to the front. He, uh, he like, He's very similar to Enzo in the way that he likes to lead from the front if he can. So uh, as we see the lead three now playing a little bit more nicely this lap as uh, the guys behind are really struggling just to keep in tow with that uh, top three when, they, uh, when they're working together. As uh, also, it looks like we're uh, starting to lose Chris Herrera, Herrera sorry, off the, uh, the back of this pack as well. Looks like uh, with Mitch and Enzo stepping up a gear, Chris maybe just struggling to hang on a little bit there, Alex. Yeah, potentially. The guys in front of him also uh, now have formed, what's that, a, a seven-car pack with Cantor on the back in seventh, and they are just that magic one second ahead of Herrera. Uh, if he plays his cards right, he might just be able to get back on, but that uh, duffing around with the front three really uh, brought us to, from a, a split pack at front now to a full pack of seven, it's no Imola race, I can tell you. There was all cars in the field involved for, uh, in one single draft train. And the first laps, first few laps last week, it finally whittled down to about six. But here we are, nearly halfway through this one, and we've still got a front pack of seven, which uh, just, again, goes to the quality of the racing out there. Not a lot of overtaking uh, because it is more challenging than you might think in these cars. Because the longest straight, which is typically your best passing opportunity, and it ends... Uh, in one of the most difficult chicanes you'll ever see. These guys off this week often are adjusting their suspension quite significantly. One of the few tracks you will see the guys really raise the front of the car up to deal with this very chicane here. Clip the first one, jump over the second. See all the, the guys jumping that second part of the chicane. That's the fastest way through. And if you don't raise the suspension at the front, you will cop a lot of damage and it will cost you significant time. The front wing of these cars acts does actually uh, cost you a lot of time if you damage it, Ben. So these guys potentially having adjusted the suspension for one of the few uh, few tracks this season. 
Yeah, definitely. So th this track and uh, the track we were at last week as well, Ebola, um, I know a few guys raised the front of the car of that to deal with those dreaded sausage curbs on the inside of the chicanes. And we did see a move there from Geedy on uh, the guy to get himself into seconds. We see Mitch McLeod diving up the inside of Danny El Camareri as well. So Mitch McLeod now trying to move forwards. So we're seeing a little bit of shuffling of the cards right now as we're uh, coming to the halfway point of this race as we come across the line. It's going to be seven laps to go as we finish lap seven. So uh, definitely looking... Oh, as we see Enzo very wide, almost puts it in the wall. Manages to hold on to it for dear life there. But that uh, final chicane is definitely something to uh, to be scared of there as Enzo gets himself back onto the, uh, the back of the lead pack as he was starting to fall off there as he runs wide once again. So Enzo's... Definitely pushing really hard to try and stay on with our leaders, Alex. Yeah, let's go grab a look at uh, that McLeod overtake into the heavy braking zone. Look at that, straight towards the apex. Camamari gives him room, gets it done. Actually, that's a decent move there. He's, uh, he's, both drives have done very well there to get that done. And McLeod looking to put his stamp in the later stages of this race as they come now down to that heavy braking zone, down three gears. Grab the little bit of the first uh, apex, a lot of the second. Jeepers, it's like the monster trucks, uh, Skippy style over that sec that second quarter of the second part of the first chicane. There's a coming to the second chicane now. Geedy now looking to put his stamp on the game and race with uh, O'Frey the, uh, the, for the second week in a row. This time O'Frey, though, not buried in the pack, he's leading uh, and leading strongly. Uh, so interesting to see how the red face racer returns once again to uh, Sunday Night Lights. But oh, McLeod again, chucks it up the inside. He's got it done past Axel, the four-plated car. McLeod really starting to get his sh his groove on now in this uh, second half of the race, Ben. Yeah, McLeod's definitely showing that he's got the uh, the race craft behind him to send it up the other side without losing too much time now. But he is that magic second now off the back of the guy. So he's going to have to put his head down right now. Otherwise, we're going to split this pack again. It's two packs of three as uh, Julian up front is just showing absolute pace dominance right now. Yeah, usually we're talking about when there's a pass in, in the draft, it's the lead car getting swallowed by the guys behind. But everybody else is just scrabbling for positions behind him as he just toes everybody along. And we're uh, we're running an absolutely rapid pace right now, Alex. Yeah, we saw Camamari go through on Zach Zhao uh, in the first uh, first corner this time round. So Zhao losing a couple of spots uh, within the space of half a lap. Uh, the uh, Chinese driver this week. Uh, not really uh, not really where he wants to be in the second half of the race. Six uh, six laps, five laps to go. Whee! See the oh, rear of that car. There. Oh, that was a big one. We caught that first hand. The thing bounced about three times, I think, as the suspension took up the load on the landing. And you know, O'Frey now under all sorts of pressure from Geedy. And we still, even at this stage of the race, we've got seven cars with uh, Canter on the rear of this uh, lead pack there, Ben. Yeah, looks like we just had a bit of a touch there between Geedy and uh, O'Frey as well, coming out of that chicane. And um, O'Frey just uh, pulling away a little bit there, but uh, Geedy's putting all sorts of pressure over the back of him. We saw that defensive posturing from uh, O'Frey really compromise his entry in that first chicane. And, uh, of course, you saw that compromised entry <laughs> uh, resulted in a compromised exit as he got airborne over that uh, second part of the chicane. So watch our leaders now come flying through this final chicane. But Cloud has bridged the gap. He's right on the back of Nagai now as uh, Kamen <laughs> sorry, Kamameri, uh had a big moment. It looks like he has to slow down as well because he slowed right down. Let uh, Enzo and Zach back through and uh, he's going to fall right off the back of this lead pack. Yeah, it's a tough slowdown there, and that's his race done, I have to say. Uh, McLeod now all over the back of Nagai, son. And uh, we've got Gideon and O'Frey sitting uh, and looking to get away with this one, that's for sure. Uh, and the hard-charging McLeod looking to put an ANZ stamp on this as we see Gideon run quite wide through four. That might compromise him, but will Nagai have a look? He's going to force him to the outside and defend. Defend into the chicane will be getting. You can see the damage from that touch early last lap. Oh, a little bit of net code contact there. Very tough to go too wide. And the guy does get through on easy. He might have picked up a slowdown potentially. Looks like he might be. Yeah, look at that. He's serving the slowdown there. Um, and I don't know if I can jump back uh, to get a replay or not. Yeah, I might be able to. Let's go see 
if uh, we can get the replay here. Two cars coming down into the chicane. Looks very much like, yeah, Giddy's opening up the corner a bit. He's not quite clear. And the guy turns in and then gets turned out. Um, and there again, he's going to ride this massively. Cop a very big slowdown. And that, again, is, uh, is his race done, Ben. Yeah, unfortunately, they're from the guy. And while we're watching that replay as well, McLeod has once again sent it down the hairpin, this time on Geedy. So uh, McLeod up to second, but it's at the expense of that one second margin. So right now, McLeod right on the edge of the draft of uh, Mr. Julian O'Frey out in the lead. So Julian's got head down, bum up, and he is pushing on quite rapidly. So uh, this has now turned into a battle of pace and whether the McLeod can use that little scamper of draft that he's got to try and close that gap, or if uh, himself and Geedy are now going to be battling for second. I tell you what, McLeod's pace has been good enough, I think. Uh, he might just be able to bridge this gap, which would be an outstanding effort. I don't know, he's done much practice here, and he's uh, certainly got the fluid to warm him up the engine here tonight going already, so and that might be giving him a bit of courage to make those big, bold moves into that uh, final hairpin there. It's, uh, it looks like Zhao was showing the nose there to Geedy. Uh, big bouncing efforts once again. Yeah, it's already down to nine tenths uh, for McLeod. So he is in draft and he's got enough time to do it. Three and a half laps remaining as they go through the second chicane this time round. McLeod and Geedy could be right back on our fray before, before we know it, Ben. Well, big lock up into the sh second chicane isn't going to help that cause, though. As we see the, uh, the gap pop back out to that 1.1 second mark. So again, right on the edge of that draft range. We're going to have to see no mistakes and no infighting now between Geedy and McLeod to see if they can bridge that gap to, uh, to O'Frey. As Zach Sow just sitting patiently behind them now as uh, Nagai and Enzo are side by side coming out of the uh, final hairpin there. So once again, uh, the guy is just getting shuffled backwards right now. So they're going to go side by side and there's contact into the final chicane. The guy has been sent out by uh, by Enzo there, unfortunately, and uh, it's another big incident into that final chicane, Alex. Yeah, I've got to say, we followed that one uh, throughout, and uh, Enzo chucked it up the inside, a la Mitch McLeod, into that hairpin, and uh, I've got to say, Mitchell's done a fantastic job of getting through there, uh, and the, the multiple times that he's done it, because Enzo was slipping and sliding and ran wide, that compromised his exit enough to have him side by side, and... I don't know about you, Ben, but I'm not going too wide through a, a, a final chicane that uh, may as well be flat out in fourth. I just don't think that's uh, that's the kind of smart racing you want to see, and that's going to cost them any chance. I don't think uh, Kander's going to advance from a two and three quarter second gap to get back on, uh, and he'll finish fifth at best from what I say. And, and Nagai, once again, after you know such a great start and leading, uh, getting right up near the front, he's down in ninth, and we won't see him again tonight. I wouldn't have thought up near the front. So O'Frey leading it out. McLeod uh, sitting in second, doing the ANZ Club. Uh, uh, very proud here tonight with Geedy tucked in behind. I'll tell you what, that's a fantastic company to be sitting, a sandwich to be in, I should say, in terms of skill and pace. You've got uh, O'Frey uh, and Geedy sandwiching McLeod with Zach Zau tucked in behind. And I'm wondering, Ben, if that nose-to-tail contact, you can see the damage on Geedy's nose, uh, is really compromising, uh, well, compromising his run. Yeah, I think something like that, that kind of wing damage around here, you're probably looking at Maybe a couple of Ks an hour as we see a very uh, wide line through the first part of that final chicane there for Geedy. He's pushing that thing super hard right now. But uh, again, yes, maybe a, a kilometre or two an hour of difference uh, with that damage. But that's all it takes to not be able to get your nose out and uh, posture yourself into a passing position. As we're seeing these guys inch uh, ever so closer to the rear of Julian Afray right now. And uh, we've got to be concerned whether uh, Julian's got any damage out of that contact as well that we saw between Geedy and O'Frey. Yeah, look at the rear. The rear wing looks okay, but sometimes the uh, the exhaust can cop a bit of damage. That, cop, uh, that can cost you uh, a few horses, uh, a few of the ponies not wanting to fire after that. But at the moment, yeah, seven tenths is the gap between McLeod and O'Frey as they come through the penultimate run through this first chicane. Big bounce from the uh, Talk Inc. driver there of Mitchell McLeod. Uh, 
uh, O'Frey still leading. It's down about six tenths now. So he picked up a tenth through the bold running of the uh, that chicane is the front of the car. The nose dipping down in the braking zone from McLeod. They're down to first gear for that second chicane. O'Frey, the one-plated car, leading them around. It's still six and a half tenths this time around. So they've only got the one lap to go after this, Ben. Uh, if McLeod gets it, we know where he's going to send it through. But can he, uh, can he catch him? Oh, look at that big braking there. Closes up, gabs another half a tenth there maybe he's right in the thick of the draft now ben and uh potentially making for a pretty exciting last lap yeah the way the draft works as well the closer you get the stronger the draft is so when you're you know second away you've only got this little bit of a nibble of draft but as you get into that six seven five tenths area the draft just gets stronger and stronger and it builds and it builds and it builds and you know by the time you're right behind the lead car you've got this massive rush just pushing you forwards as we see um once again, Geedy just a bit scrappy through that final chicane and through turn one, dropping a tyre. It looks like it's going to turn into a two-horse race now between O'Frey and McLeod into this uh, final lap now as we're watching them come through these sweepers of two and three into four now. And uh, looks like McLeod's got that draft. He's right on the tail now. It's only a couple of tenths. And uh, we know exactly where this is going to uh, all come to an end tonight, Alex. It's going to be into that final hairpin. Yeah, 100%. Uh, that's where my money is too. And I'll tell you what, McLeod's been uh, going really well through there. We've seen a couple of very tidy moves from McLeod into that hairpin. Uh, the question is, will uh, O'Frey take the defensive line? He won't have seen that going on necessarily. Oh, I was behind Geedy and Zach Zow. Side by side, they will go into that second chicane. Geedy defending up the inside. Oh, I think they might have managed to get through there unscathed. Beautiful work side by side. It's almost like Torval and Dean from the uh, Winter Olympics of times gone past. As now we are with McLeod. Yeah, Frey. Oh, he's not close enough. Yeah, McLeod shows it. But no, it looks like O'Frey's going to get the drive out. What about Geedy and uh, Zao? Geedy holds on uh, and will defend. Oh, I'll tell you what, it's going to be interesting there. I don't think McLeod's close enough. I think it's going to be O'Frey that runs away with it. Uh, and well, we always side by side for third, though, Alex, as uh, Zao's got to run on the outside of Geedy. Are we going to see the same issue we saw before? We're we going to get it through side by side through the final chicane as Julian O'Frey comes across the line to take the win. For round four of season 22 of Sunday Night Lights with McLeod in second. Geedy holds on for third with uh, six hundredths of a second between himself and Zach Zow. Beautiful run there from the top four drivers. We see uh, the rest of the field starting to come across the line now. Corey Lean up six to finish uh, in the points there in P9. And he's returned to the top split. Kawabe Sun, he's down in 13th. Oh, someone's uh, let their engine go. Is that Collins? Yeah, and he's returned to Sunday Night Lights action. Uh, he's down in 17th and uh, none to please and lets the engine know about it in the end. But while uh, everyone's running their warm-down laps, uh, why don't we take a look at the results for... Round four from Zolder of season 22 of Sunday Night Lights. Julian O'Frey for Red Face Racing. Getting it done uh, on his second week back. Great to see the Red Face Racer uh, out there and doing well. Uh, his, his partner in crime, Sasha Gourlay, on to, uh, I think, onto the tin tops these days. And O'Frey uh, back with us and doing a fantastic job. Mitch McLeod for Talk Inc. Leading ANZ driver of the, uh, in the standings in the end. Put on a great show. Some fantastic, fantastic moves into the hairpin. Uh, where others struggled sometimes to get past. He made it look as easy as you like. Ludwig Geedy finishing in third tonight after taking out last week. Picked up a bit of damage. That might have cost him a bit more uh, action at the front and, uh, and his chance to win this one here tonight. Although he did put on a great race with Zach Zow there, who finished fourth tonight. The two of them showing how it's done side by side through that final chicane. Enzo Cantor in fifth tonight for Mivano Sim Racing. Danielle Camareri in his uh, Sunday Night Lights debut, finishing in sixth. Uh, the Italian driver, Chris Herrera from the US, running on empty team. He's uh, he's finished in seventh. Giuseppe Gelini from uh, Italy also uh, in eighth tonight. Corey Lee in the ANZ driver, back in the top split and in the points, finishing in ninth after not qualifying where he would have liked, no doubt. Jeff Snavelli uh, from the US, he's in 10th tonight. 
uh, Naoya Nagai, Nagai's son from Japan. He's in 11th after being in a, up to his eyeballs throughout tonight. Just got shuffled back with some late uh, race incidents, unfortunately. Uh, 12th and final SNL point scoring position tonight is Ian McFadden from UK and I. Kawabe-san, Gol Kawabe from Japan, the second Japanese driver here tonight. He's in 13th. And just out of the points, Daniel Fogherini back in the top split tonight. The Italian driver in 14th. Takumi Yamato, the final Japanese driver. He's in 15th. Daniel Blanco, the only, the sole Iberian here tonight, down in 16th. Samuel Collins, the ANZ driver in 17th. And Brett McBurney, after that early incident that we saw, got turned with Corey Lean from uh, from memory. Uh, he uh, parked it and... That's all we saw from him retiring with uh, 12 laps down, Ben. Shame for uh, for Brett, but uh, great to see an ANZ driver up near the front. Yeah, exactly right. And uh, it was great to see Mitch come through the field. I wouldn't say come through the field. He started in six, so he wasn't, he wasn't right down the bottom. But um, on a track that is so hard to pass, it's good to see a little bit of movement going on, um, especially in the, in the right direction, which um, unfortunately there for uh, Nagai and McBurney, we saw them go the wrong direction. Um, but yeah, again, it's great to see uh, some ANZ guys right up there fighting for the uh, for the win. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, really enjoyed that one. It, it was a completely different style of race to what we saw last week. It's surprisingly hard to get past here, and, and McLeod really showing some fantastic form and skill uh, to make. I would suggest the most passes in in the race. He was up. He was only up four positions in the end. Uh, but uh, I tell you what, three of them he got at the uh, at the hairpin at least. Uh, and as we saw some others have, have a crack at it, not easy, easy to do, that's for sure. But uh, great to see uh, the ANZ guys uh, putting it to the rest of the world. Uh, I didn't expect as many uh, of the strong guys uh, here tonight and see us off of over 4,200. So great support from the community once again. And a few of the guys in chat perhaps uh, could get, uh, get out there next week uh, and see what sort of a bumper race we can put on once again, oh, we do have Mr. O'Fray uh, in the um, in the green room. I was about getting ready to sign off too, but uh, we might um, we might pull him up and say good day, Julian O'Fray. Uh, we've got you live on the stream, mate. Thank you for joining us. But uh, more importantly, congratulations! Uh, your second week back in Sunday Night Lights, and you've come away with a with a fantastic win. Congratulations. Thank you. Hello. Uh, I'm happy uh, with this one because uh, other driver was uh, faster than me, I think. And uh, I'm happy to, to stay uh, in front uh, all race long. Yeah, mate. Uh, really good. It was it was good there right at the end too. Uh, you must have had some good pace because we saw uh, Mitchell McLeod behind you uh, make a, a really solid overtaking move a few times into uh, the, the final hairpin and he just wasn't close enough to get it done there on you tonight in that final lap. We were expecting him to try and overtake in that final hairpin uh, but it looked like you just had the pace to keep him behind, mate. So congratulations. I hope you had a good time out there racing. I, I pushed uh, so hard to to don't let him uh, come back because uh, I, I know uh, from uh, my past season, uh, McLeod, uh, each time I uh, battle with him, uh, I have a ghost contact and, uh, and uh, a race is over. So uh, this is one thing I really, really don't want to, to happen. Yeah, fair enough, mate. It's pretty tough. We race from all around the world, and sometimes uh, that gets a bit of us, which is a shame. But uh, certainly uh, tonight, not the case, uh, and you've come away with a fantastic win for Red Face Racing. Congratulations, mate. Is there anyone you'd like to uh, to thank or give a shout-out to tonight before we let you go? Oh, I'd just like to, to thank you for your, uh, your amazing job, and that's all. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, mate. Thank you again for joining us. And thank you for joining us for the interview after the race. We love to have the drivers come and chat to us and the, and the race winner in particular. And I know English is obviously your second language, so it takes a lot of courage as well. So thank you very much, Julian. We, uh, we look forward to seeing you on track in the coming weeks. Thank you. Bye-bye.
There you go, Ben. Julian O'Frey. I love it when people come up and have a chat, particularly, you know, it can't be easy. You know, I mean, I don't speak uh, uh, French or anything else. I mean, I speak a bit of Japanese, but to, uh, not enough to come up and do an interview, that's for sure. Yeah, his English is much better than my French, I'll put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think about the same as well. Oh, look, we've got a few lined up now, actually. Uh, we'll grab them in finishing order. So we've got uh, Ludwig Geedy joining us once again. Uh, who managed uh, a third position tonight after picking up some damage during the race. Little nose to tail contact, and I think that might have cost him a fair bit uh, towards the closing stages. But a fantastic battle with Zach Zhao in the closing stages. Welcome, Ludwig. Uh, congratulations on the uh, on the uh, podium here tonight. Not the win from last week, but certainly looked like you had some fun out there. Uh, yeah. Uh, hello, guys. Uh, well, thank you. I'm a bit disappointed, to be honest. Uh, once again, I had a really bad qualifying, so uh, I had to, to work my way back. And uh, yeah, uh, Julien was uh, lagging a lot at some point, especially in the chicanes. Uh, I was like 0.3 or 0.2 behind him, but somehow we got a contact. And uh, yeah, so I had a lot of damage. Uh, pretty much uh, the whole front was uh, completely toasted. So that's why I was uh, super slow in the straight from from that point, and yeah, I was pretty much a sitting duck. So um, I was planning uh, for uh, I think it's Mitchell uh, P two to to battle with uh, Julien in front and try to do something. But uh, yeah, a bit disappointed, but still, it's a good result. Yeah, well done, mate. It's tough when you get that damage. Uh, and we were just talking about with Julian that uh, he was worried about Mitch and the, and the net codes. And, and that, that happens, uh, unfortunately. We're, it's a part of online racing. Uh, not the bit we love, but uh, it is part of it. But, mate, certainly a fantastic drive. It is amazing to see you guys, some of these uh, great old school drivers coming back uh, and filling up these grids uh, and putting on a great show. So thank you once again for joining us, mate. Is there anyone you'd like to give a shout out to before we let you go? Uh, yeah, you, especially uh, you guys doing, a, again, a wonderful job. So yeah, uh, hope to see you some more in a few coming weeks. Yeah, beautiful, mate. Uh, we look forward to seeing you as well. So thanks again, mate, and we'll chat to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. There you go, uh, Ben. He is one of the old school skippy drivers. Uh, I remember when I was starting out and Ludwig was uh, right on top of the pops and uh, it doesn't look like he's lost much, that's for sure. No, other than his front wing, he looks like he hasn't <laughs> lost much at all. But uh, yeah, like Ludwig is before my time in, in the skippy community and uh, it's great to see someone that um, has been around for a long time coming back and and show on how it's done. And just unfortunately, a little bit of contact there is um, just hurt him to the point where, like we were saying, it's those couple of K an hour is, is a massive difference when you, we're talking about margins like we are tonight. And um, he still did well to hold on to what he had and uh, still brought home a podium. Yeah, absolutely. He goes to, to talk to the skill of the guy. If he gets his quality sorted, uh, he'll be right on top of it next week as well. So, well done to Ludwig. And uh, our final driver in the booth here tonight is one Enzo Genzo. Enzo, uh, welcome. That's a lovely wig you've got in that photo we've got on the screen at the moment, by the way. But uh, top five finish, up three spots. Probably not the qualifying you were looking for, mate. How was the race? Hi, guys. Uh, thank you, as always, uh, for your uh, work. I'm uh, broadcasting now on, on my channel. Um, well, uh, I don't know if you look at uh, the, the race I did yesterday, but it was a complete disaster. Uh, I, I, I finished uh, uh, 7th, 10th, 11th and 14th. So worse and worse and worse and worse. So today I had no expectation at all because uh, I am pretty enough fast in qualifying, but uh, I have not uh, a solid pace. Uh, in the race uh, this morning, uh, I was. Uh, too, it, it was too late. Ch Ciao, Edwin. It, it was too late, uh, uh, and uh, I have. Uh, I had no time to do any any warm up lap before the qualifying, so I did the qualifying completely cold. I missed the first lap uh, because of an off, a, 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 an off track, so I, I had only one lap to do the qualifying and. Uh, I, I have to be happy because uh, I did a decent lap. 
the strength of field was very very high so you uh, you cannot believe me but uh, i'm i'm happy uh, <laughs> with this with this race <laughs> Yeah, that's good, mate. I'm glad. Yeah, it was pretty strong strength of field. I figured with the the 24 hour race we might be down a little bit, but uh, not the case. So great to see the series being supported by people like yourself, Enzo, who come out and join us and keep the racing great. So thank you for that, mate. Is there uh, anyone you'd like to uh, give a mention to or shout out to while you're here, mate? Before we let you go. Yes, sure. I have to say thanks to, as always, to my team, uh, Mivano Sim Racing, uh, to our uh, new partner, uh, everyeye.it, that is a portal uh, based on uh, uh, games, news, uh, tech news, um, uh, a very wide portal in Italian. So you you don't uh, mind uh, you don't mind it because you i think you are not able to understand uh, italian <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, my team manager Fabio Mantellini all my teammates uh, Manu Lucchetta that uh, is not here because uh, he was on the 24 hour yesterday and he, uh, he, he has no time to practice with his keepy uh, so Everyone who support me and all, uh, my follower on uh, Twitch and you, as always, for your awesome work. Because uh, for me, really, every time is uh, uh, really a pleasure to do this race because uh, it, it was like home for me. Uh, you know, uh, I'm here with you uh, from a long, long time and uh, I'm, I feel every time very comfortable uh, with you in, in the interview and in the race too. So I'm... I, I, I wish this will be continue for a long time. Yeah, thanks, Enzo. That's the plan, mate. And as long as people keep turning up and the the, uh, the community supports the event, we'll do the same, mate. So thank you for your kind words. And, uh, mate, we look forward to seeing you hopefully again in the, in the weeks to come. Yeah, I wish to. See ya. There you go, Ben, uh, Mr. Enzo Kanda for, Thr oh, it's not Thrustmaster anymore, it's Mivano Sim Racing, they look like they, they sound like at least they might have picked up another sponsor along the way, but uh, look, Enzo out there, he uh, tried tried his best, he sounded like he was pretty happy with the top five at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, and you know, if Enzo's races are exciting, you know his interview is going to be, so uh, <laughs> it's, always, it's always great to hear from Enzo, and it's, it's great to hear that... Um, how, how much he, he treasures uh, running on a Sunday night and um, and the community it just shows how strong the Skippy community is. And um, I, for one, am very glad to have Enzo in our community. Yeah, he's a bit of fun. I'll tell you what, he, he mixes it up on track too. It makes it exciting, I can tell you. Um, all right, folks, uh, that might uh, do us for tonight. Ben, anything uh, anything you got coming up on this week you want to share with the folks at home? Uh, this week, no, I'm, I'm going away for Australia day. So I'm going to have a nice little holiday. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing this week. So no, no, uh, no streams or anything like that this week. Yeah. Beautiful, mate. Well, thank you very much for filling in tonight, Corey. Uh, we'll no doubt be back in action next week. Uh, if, as he gets over uh, the man flu or, or some such thing. But, folks, everything uh, on your screen, top split at the moment. Join us in the Discord, of course, for the interviews and the broadcast, uh, this and every other race in the history of Monday and Sunday Night Lights on the Top Split YouTube channel. Otherwise, we'll be back here, same bat time, same bat channel next week. And until then, I'm Alex McKellar, and joining me uh, at late notice tonight and on behalf of Mr. Ben Snell, uh, I will say thank you for your company and your support both on track and off. And until next time, ciao for now.